Welcome back to the memes. I'm not the expert, and I love college football. But what if we made college football even better? Imagine a world where the worst teams in a Power 5 conference have to fight for their right to stay in that conference. Similar to the English Premier League system, at the end of the year, the worst teams in a Power 5 conference are going to be challenged by the best teams in a Group of 5 conference in like a bowl game, playoff type situation. If the Group of 5 team were able to upset and beat that Power 5 conference team, then they are promoted to that Power 5 conference, sending that team down, relegated them to the group of five. So for example, Vandy goes two and 10 in the SEC. They're at the bottom. That means they're going to be challenged by the best team in the Sun Belt. For this first simulation, it was Louisiana who finished 11 and two. You can probably already feel the tension here. If Louisiana wins, they're going to be going to the SEC. That's immediate clout. You're going to be in a premier conference and you were just in the Sun Belt. And that would most certainly boost recruiting, finances, enrollments across the board, making this one game the most important game in school history. On the flip side, if Vanderbilt were to lose, that would mean extreme embarrassment for the fan base. I mean, you'd be going from the SEC down to the Sun Belt. Funding would drop tremendously right away. Recruits would be transferring out because they want to stay at that top level of competition. And to get back in the SEC, they would have to win the Sun Belt in the next season and win that promotion bowl game just to get back to where they were. So in a lot of ways, it is also the most important game in Vanderbilt school history. For our experimental simulation, we have paired each Power 5 conference with a group of five, like I mentioned earlier. I'll quickly run down them. We got the ACC with the American Conference. We got the Big 10 with the MAC, the Big 12 with Conference USA, Pac-12 with Mountain West, and of course, the SEC with the Sun Belt. Each year, the bottom two teams of the Power 5 Conference will be challenged by the top two teams of the Group of Five Conference. In this video, I have recorded a decade of simulations, so that way we can get a realistic and good set of data to see how this college football world is shaken up by this new system. Without spoiling anything, the results are unexpected, shocking, and extremely entertaining. But first, let's hear from today's sponsor, Manscaped. So we know the classic products of Manscaped like the Lawnmower 4.0 and also their hygiene products like the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. But now they got something brand new on the market, the Weed Whacker 2.0. Listen to this. That's good stuff. And it goes without saying, like keeping your nose and ear hairs trimmed, it's just good hygiene and you look better when you do that. So what's new about this one? It's got a better motor and has 7,000 RPMs. It's got steel blade inside that helps an improved trimming performance on your nose. I mean, it's just all around better than its predecessor. It's safe, it's efficient, it's got skin safe technology, so you're not gonna have to worry about nicks, tugs, or scratches when you're getting in there, you know, trimming, doing your thing. As you can see, it is cordless. It is rechargeable with a 45 minute battery life. Plenty of time to take care of your nose and ear trimming needs. I recommend getting the Weed Whacker 2.0 in the Peak Hygiene Plan. They're going to send you replacement blades every couple of months to make sure your blade is clean and sharp enough to take care of whatever it needs to. You can also get it bundled in the Platinum Package 4.0 or the Performance Package 4.0, so you really can't go wrong. Go to manscaped.com today. Use my custom link in the description below at manscaped.com expert. We're going to get 20% off and free international shipping. Once again, use my custom link in the description below at manscaped.com expert. We're going to get 20% off and free international shipping. Thanks again, Manscaped for sponsoring this video. The first relegation promotion bowl game I recorded from season one was between two and 10 West Virginia of the Big 12 and eight and four UTEP from Conference USA. And these games wasted no time being entertaining as West Virginia had an enormous fourth quarter comeback and capped it off with a go ahead touchdown with under a minute left to go in the game to avoid relegation winning 49 to 45. If it was a feature in NCAA football, I already know those fans would be storming the field. Kansas and UAB had a close game as well, but the Jayhawks also avoid relegation in a close one, 28 to 21. Moving over to the Southeast, we have Vandy and Arkansas finishing at the bottom of the SEC. Louisiana and Georgia State at the top of the Sun Belt. I'll be honest, I botched the recording for Vandy and Louisiana, but surprisingly, two and 10 Vandy ended up beating Louisiana 30 to 24. Georgia State and Arkansas went down to the wire, but the Tigers came up with a big interception to seal it, making them the first team promoted so far in this video. They are headed to the SEC next year and Arkansas will be relegated to the Sun Belt. Out West, we have Colorado and Cal at the bottom of the Pac-12. They're going to battle UNLV in San Jose State. Colorado easily takes care of the Trojans, though, 55 to 22. Cal cruises to victory 33 to 26, so no movement in these conferences. In the Midwest, Purdue survives potential relegation of Ball State by dominating 51 to 20. However, Minnesota did not have the same luck as they were upset 51 to 45 to Kent State. So that means Kent State's moving up to the Big Ten and Minnesota is dropping to the MAC. Finally, we go to the East Coast where we 
we see Duke get obliterated by Cincinnati 52 to 24, earning themselves a promotion to the ACC and banishing Duke to the American Conference. What is interesting about this simulation though is 10 and 3 UCF of the American Conference. They're ranked number one in the country. But in this world, I made it so that they can't play for a college football playoff because they're in group of five. It just didn't make sense to my brain. So therefore, they have to challenge two and 10 Syracuse just to get a spot in the ACC. And despite being such a high ranked team, number one in the country and all, UCF actually gets stunned by Syracuse with a late touchdown. Meaning UCF is going back down to the American Conference again next year. Sounds like they didn't deserve to be in the college football playoff anyways. I mean, come on, losing to a two and 10 team? That'd be extremely embarrassing. But in the actual college football playoff, North Carolina easily takes care of Iowa State to win the national championship. Pretty interesting matchup there for our first national championship, but it gets weirder, trust me. This is just the beginning. In season one, we had a total of three promotions and relegations. Now, season two is where the experiment really starts to take off and get crazy. So Duke is really struggling in the American Conference as they finish actually two in 10, making them 11th in the conference. So they're gonna remain down there for another season. Shocking to me though, Minnesota is actually struggling in the MAC as they posted a five and seven record and finished eighth in their group of five conference. Arkansas wants to get back in the SEC. They finished second in the Sun Belt. So they're gonna be challenging Vanderbilt who is once again near the bottom of the SEC. That's not really surprising to anybody. But what it is surprisingly is the two and 10 Commodores clutch it up and pull away heavily in the second half to beat the Razorbacks 54 to 44. So Arkansas once again will be staying in the Sun Belt. Georgia State's time in the SEC, however, was short lived as they finished 0 12 this season, dead last in the conference. So they're gonna have to play in another bowl game to stay in the Power Five. Unfortunately for them, Southern Miss hits a late field goal to win it 45 to 42, relegating Georgia State back down to the Sun Belt and promoting Southern Miss up to the SEC. Kent State struggled in the Big Ten as well, finishing 13th. So that means they're gonna have to play Akron in a promotion relegation bowl game. It was close back and forth, but the Akron zips. They're victorious 34 to 24, moving themselves up to the big time in the Big Ten and sending Kent State back to where they used to be in the MAC. Now Rutgers finished dead last in the Big Ten. So they are playing NIU. Rutgers actually blows an early lead, but they somehow reclaim the lead with under two minutes left to win it 44 to 40, saving themselves from relegation. Way to go Rutgers. UCF, who I know was bitter about last season, they find themselves with another chance to make it into the ACC. And they're battling three and nine Virginia Tech, but they pull away heavily to win it 52 to 27, finally earning themselves that promotion and sending Virginia down to the American. Two and 10 Louisville gets smacked by Houston 58 to 27. So they will be moving up to the ACC as well. And that means Louisville is relegated to the American. BYU is promoted to the Pac-12 after just outright clapping Washington State 76 to 52. The Cougars will now be in the Mountain West. UNLV stuns Cal with an incredible fourth quarter drive to win 37 to 33. Meaning they are promoted to the Pac-12 and Cal is sent down to the Mountain West. UAB came back to beat TCU 50 to 35, earning themselves a spot in the Big 12 and relegating the Horned Frogs to Conference USA. The most exciting game of the season, without a doubt, West Virginia and FAU had an overtime thriller, but the Owls come up with a clutch interception to win it 44 to 41. And FAU is promoted to the Big 12. West Virginia is sent down to Conference USA. And Oklahoma dominates North Carolina in the national championship game 72 to 28. We're starting to ramp it up though. There was eight promotions and relegations in season two. So a lot has changed and year three is also full of crazy twists. The biggest is 10 and three Akron who was just newly promoted to the Big 10. Well, guess what? In their first year, they won the entire Big 10, the Big 10 Conference Championship and all. That's an insane jump after just getting there. Heck, that would have been impressive even after a decade. That's off to Akron. What an incredible storyline for them. Some other storylines around the country though, Southern Miss finished 10th in the SEC, so they get to stay in the Power Five for another year. Virginia Tech, Duke, and Louisville are actually stinking it up in the American. Minnesota is still trapped in the MAC at eighth place. BYU and UNLV, while they are in the lower half, they're sticking around in the Pac-12 for another year. Washington State and Cal remain in the Mountain West at fourth and fifth respectively. And another huge surprise is Florida Atlantic at number two in the Big 12. And on the flip side of that, TCU, they're just mid in the Conference USA right now. So they're gonna be in group of five for another year. Vandy is once again near the bottom of the SEC, so they're gonna be playing Louisiana. Vandy actually blows them out. That actually makes them three and oh in these relegation bowl games so far. So Vandy, they might stink. They might be two and 10 during the regular season. But when it comes to these bowl game times, man, they're just something else. You don't want to see Vandy in these relegation games. Texas A&M, they end up dominating Arkansas. That means the Razorbacks are being sent back down to the Sun Belt once again. Tough luck for them. 0-3 in these bowl games. In the Big Ten, Rutgers staves off relegation. 
obligation once again by defeating Miami of Ohio 30-27, so Rutgers gets to stay in the Big Ten. Unlucky for NIU, they narrowly miss promotion again by falling to Indiana 41-33. Houston easily avoids relegation by blasting Army 57-21, so they get to stick around in the ACC for another year. UCF, on the other hand, is upset by Tulane by scoring a touchdown with seconds left to win 42-38, sending UCF down to the American and promoting Tulane to the ACC. Colorado handles New Mexico 42-28 to stay in the Pac-12. Oregon State does the same with San Diego State. Couple of blowouts. This one was 51-28. Western Kentucky actually has a shocking upset blowout of Texas Tech. That means the Hilltoppers have clinched themselves a promotion to the Big 12 and Tech is going down to Conference USA. UAB and West Virginia, who seem to always be playing each other in these games every single year. Well, guess what? They had another insane game. UAB wins it this time to remain in the Big 12, though. And that means West Virginia. You're down in Conference USA. In the National Championship, Florida State has a nice comeback to beat Alabama 34-31. to Did cool off a little bit. We only had two promotions and relegations in year three. Season four, though, is going to continue the chaos. Southern Miss still sticking around in the SEC just barely. And Akron what the heck, man? They made the Big Ten Championship again. They're a dominant force out there right now. They did not win the entire conference this time. They did lose. Still wildly impressive for them. Minnesota for another year. They're going to have to stay in the MAC because they finished fourth in the conference. Not good enough to make one of those bowl games. Houston had a good season in the ACC, finishing fifth, so they're sticking around. Cincy and Tulane will also remain in the ACC for another year as they finished ninth and 11th. And Duke's trying to fight their way up in the American, but they fell short again. They finished third, just outside of range. Gotta be top two to make one of those promotion games. Virginia Tech and Louisville are really struggling as they're near the bottom of the American. Like, what the heck is going on over there? That's straight up sadness for the Hokies. BYU and UNLV are still kicking it in the Pac-12 somehow, but Washington State, they're struggling in the Mountain West. Tough luck for the Cougs. Florida Atlantic has another strong finish near the top of the Big 12. Western Kentucky, they're mid in the Big 12, which I'd be very happy with. TCU and Texas Tech, they're not doing so hot though in the Conference USA. Finishing 6th and 10th. Now it's time for the promotion relegation games. Vandy, no surprises here. They seem to be every year. They're the star of the video. But their luck finally runs out as they are defeated by Troy. 42 to 41. That means Troy's going up to the SEC and at last Vandy is going down to the Sun Belt. And I know Arkansas, they had to be riled up from the last few seasons just losing back to back to back. But this time they blow out Mississippi State to finally achieve promotion back into the SEC. And that means Mississippi State, you're in the Sun Belt now. Tough luck. So over in the Big Ten match, Bowl games, we actually had some very intense ones. Both of these games went into overtime. Our first matchup, we have Wisconsin and Miami of Ohio. And with easily, without a doubt, the craziest ending so far in this video, get this, Miami of Ohio seals the promotion victory right here with a pick six to win the game. Imagine how hyped that would be in real life for the fan base. And on the other side, I know the Wisconsin fans, they'd be heartbroken because now they're going to be going down to the Mac, just crushing their spirits. The other game, Northern Illinois and Maryland. So NIU, they scored touchdown to go ahead in overtime. Then it's Maryland's time to try and tie it up, but they cough it up on their possession to gift NIU a promotion to the Big Ten. Imagine that. Now your team, Maryland, you're going down to the Mac just because you couldn't hold on to the football. Virginia cruises the victory over Army to avoid relegation, so they're going to be staying in the ACC. Memphis, on the other hand, has three big-time sacks late to seal a promotion win over Georgia Tech 27-24, to sending the Yellow Jackets down to the American. Over on the Pac-12 Mountain West side, Cal has an opportunity to get back into the power five and they do so with authority cruising the victory over oregon state 49 to 30 that sends oregon state down to the mountain west and cal's moving up to the pac 12 ucla though their quarterback poops the badges outright with five interceptions falling to air force 28 to 14 relegating his team to the mountain west and promoting air force to the pac 12 i imagine in real life that guy would be getting a lot of hate on twitter single-handedly ruining your entire school's reputation rice upsets kansas state to be promoted to the Big 12 and they send the Wildcats down to Conference USA. In another year where UAB and West Virginia seem to play each other again. But this time West Virginia slaughters them 69 to 31. Boost them back into the Big 12, sending UAB back down to the Conference USA. In the National Championship, we continue to have parity. Ohio State wins this one over Florida 24 to 16. A lot of movement that year. We had nine promotions and relegations. Moving on to season five, huge congratulations to Arkansas because they're finally back to being mid again in the SEC. But I'm sure they're happy about that after the last few years. Mississippi State just missing out on that bowl game as they're third in the Sun Belt, so they're going to be down there for another year. Northern Illinois is the second MAC team to come into the Big Ten and just 
win the whole thing. What's crazy about this one, they clinched themselves a spot in the college football playoff. That's an insane feat for them. Miami of Ohio also had a good year in the Big Ten, finishing fourth. Maryland and Wisconsin finished third and fourth in the MAC, so they're going to continue to be group of five teams for season six. A lot of those American teams in the ACC, they're finishing near the bottom, but they're still good enough to stay there in the Power Five. So good for them. Duke is still on the edge of that promotion, but they finished third again, so they're still going to be in the American. Virginia Tech, I'll be honest, has looked quite awful in these simulations. They're a bottom feeder here in the American Conference. UNLV and BYU, they're still hanging on in the Pac-12. Oregon State and UCLA, they've been stinking it up in the Mountain West. Had to be that quarterback who threw five picks the other year. And Florida Atlantic, they continue to be a powerhouse in the Big 12. They finished third this time. West Virginia finished right behind them at four. Western Kentucky finished eighth. So they're all going to be in the Big 12 next year. Texas Tech, they just missed their chance of promotion this year by finishing fourth in Conference USA. On to the bowl games. Vandy storms back late to be promoted back to the SEC, sending Troy down to the Sun Belt. Southern Miss's time in the SEC ends here as they get blown up by Arkansas State, meaning Arkansas State gets promoted and it's the first time they're going to be in the SEC. Ball State upsets Iowa 28 to 10. They're going to be promoted to the Big Ten, and that is another Big Ten team falling to a MAC team. However, after some impressive runs in the Big Ten, Akron is finally relegated after losing to Minnesota 34 to 21. But good for Minnesota though. They were trapped in the MAC since season one, so it must be nice to get some redemption. We have a crazy turn of events down in Florida, but that's not the first time anyone has said that. But Florida State, who won the national championship two seasons ago, gets relegated here, losing 33 to 16 to Georgia Tech. Truly shocking. So that means Florida State, you're going down to the American and Georgia Tech is up in the SEC now. Syracuse, they're able to fend off Tulsa with a late interception to avoid relegation, 27-21. Nevada blows out Air Force 42-23 to be promoted to the Pac-12, sending Air Force down to the Mountain West. Washington State, who we thought would never recover after stinking it up in the Mountain West, finally earns redemption by upsetting Arizona State 41-10, earning themselves promotion and sending Arizona State down to the Mountain West. Charlotte earned their first promotion by upsetting Kansas 49-42, sending the Jayhawks down to Conference USA. Kansas State also earned promotion to the Big 12 as they blow out Rice 52-7, which relegates Rice. Rice down to Conference USA. In the college football playoff, NIU was actually able to make the national championship, but unfortunately for them, they fall to USC 45 to 33. We had a total of nine promotions and relegations in this season. Season six has many surprises as well. Arkansas State managed to stick around in the SEC at number 12 in the conference. Down in the Sun Belt, Mississippi State, they're just trapped down there, not doing too hot. Minnesota's going to be staying in the Big Ten after many years down in the MAC. Good for them. Miami of Ohio is close behind them, and they're going to remain in the Big Ten for another year as well. Iowa, on the other hand, is struggling down in the MAC, finishing 7th. Clemson shockingly finished 13th in the ACC behind Tulane and Memphis, but they're safe from being relegated. Virginia Tech, FSU, and Duke will remain in the American as they finished in the middle of the conference. Crazy turn of events for Florida State. How the mighty have fallen. BYU, they're still kicking it in the Pac-12 at 9th in the conference. UCLA, Arizona State, and Oregon State, they're all mid in the Mountain West. FAU, they're still doing well in the Big 12. And Western Kentucky and Charlotte, they're going to be sticking around for another year in the Big 12. Texas Tech, Kansas, and TCU, they're all trapped in Conference USA. Another year, another time, Vandy is at the bottom of the SEC. This year, they're blown out by Coastal Carolina. So that means Vanderbilt, they are relegated to the Sun Belt. South Carolina avoids relegation by smashing South Alabama 36-6. Wisconsin earned themselves redemption and a promotion back into the Big Ten with a blowout of Ball State. NIU finished at the bottom of the Big Ten after making the natty just last season. And this game against Maryland for a relegation game was very close. And I actually think NIU got robbed here by a missed call. It appeared the receiver did not make a clean catch here, but the refs did not agree. So alas, NIU is relegated to the MAC, and Maryland is promoted to the Big Ten. Army goes into overtime with Houston. Army gets the dub and is promoted to the ACC, relegating Houston down to the American. UCF handles Wake Forest 27-17 to earn promotion to the ACC. Fresno State and Nevada have a very close game here, but the Bulldogs seal the promotion win with an interception on the final play. Air Force gets dumpstered by UNLV, who has been solid in the simulation so far. They've been sticking around in the Pac-12 for many years and successfully avoiding relegation here. Rice with a major blowout of Kansas State, 41-14 to earn promotion into the Big 12. Iowa State has a straightforward victory over MTSU to avoid relegation. Oklahoma and Miami made it to the national championship. Miami actually had a huge comeback, but it was stopped. So that means the Sooners are this year's champs. 
season seven, Coastal Carolina finished seventh in the SEC. And if we look down at the Sun Belt, Vandy finished ninth. Less than ideal for them. Miami of Ohio managed to stick around in the Big Ten at 10th. An Army had a surprisingly strong season, third in the ACC. There's actually a ton of former American teams performing well in the ACC. As UCF and Memphis finished at fifth and sixth. And you still got Cincinnati holding in there at 12th. But what if we look at the American Duke, Virginia Tech, and Wake Forest? They're going to remain down there for another year just because they weren't good enough. Fourth, fifth, and 11th. Fresno State, UNLV, and BYU, they're still living in the Pac-12. While Arizona State, UCLA, and Oregon State just can't seem to get out of the Mountain West. The Big 12 at this point has been nearly taken over completely by the Conference USA. And Florida Atlantic, they've been a force for many years. Charlotte and Rice, they're also going to be sticking around in the conference for next year. The former Big 12 teams, on the other hand, down in Conference USA, they're not doing so well. Texas Tech, Kansas State, TCU, and Kansas, they finish 4th, 5th, 7th, and 11th. Mississippi State gets their chance at promotion, but is immediately turned away by South Carolina as they just get blown out outright. Two former Sun Belt teams, Arkansas State and Georgia State, are battling it out to decide who goes up to the SEC. It was a close game, but Arkansas State avoids relegation here 38-35. to Bowling Green State with their first opportunity for promotion, and it was smooth sailing against Northwestern. They win it 30-20. to So Bowling Green State, they're going to be up in the Big Ten and Northwestern dropping down to the MAC. Iowa and Rutgers go at it, and Iowa finally finally gets their promotion after being down in the MAC for a bit. USF has a clutch fourth down play against North Carolina State to earn promotion. They're going up to the ACC. They win it 35 to 30. Florida State has an easy win against Tulane here. So the Seminoles are finally going to be back in the ACC after a few years stint in the American Conference. South Dakota State earned promotion to the Pac-12 by blowing out Colorado 41 to 10. Oregon, who actually finished dead last in the Pac-12, believe it or not, they fend off Air Force here in a close one 17 to 10. So the Ducks, they avoid relegation. UAB has another insanely close game, and this time Baylor scores a touchdown with just nine seconds remaining to avoid being relegated. However, Middle Tennessee State University earns a promotion to the Big 12 because they just blow out Western Kentucky. West Virginia, after a lot of up and downs in these simulations, they make it to the national championship, but they get dumpstered 52 to 16 by Notre Dame. So the Irish are this year's champs. By season eight, it is getting ridiculous with how many teams have switched from their original conference. Vanderbilt and Mississippi State will remain in the Sun Belt for another year as they finish third and ninth in the conference. Miami of Ohio finished ninth in the Big Ten, so they're going to be sticking around again. Iowa's still trying to get out of the MAC, but they're going to have to be there for another year because they finished third. Same thing for Northwestern as they finish sixth. A large number of American conference teams are sticking around in the ACC for quite some time. This year, we have Army, Cincinnati, UCF, USF, and Memphis. A lot of them are near the bottom of the conference, but it's still good enough to stay around. On the flip side, we have several ACC teams down in the American Conference. Once again, you got Duke and Virginia Tech who are just continuing to stay in the group of five, even after this season. And Wake Forest is down there with them as well, but Duke and Virginia Tech, they've been there for ages. Pac-12 has a lot of invasion as well. A lot of these Mountain West teams like San Diego State, BYU, and UNLV, they're sticking around. In the Mountain West, we got the former Pac-12 teams, Colorado, Arizona State, Oregon State, and they're going to be trapped down there for for another season. But the Big 12 has to be the conference with the most turnover, as nearly half the teams have been replaced by Conference USA teams. And most of them, they've been solid for several years, like FAU. They have another top two finish in the conference again. Charlotte, Rice, MTSU, they've all been around middle of the pack for most of their stint. But what is even more surprising is teams like TCU, they've been trapped in Conference USA since season two, most of the time being mid-table or even at the bottom of the conference some years. Teams joining them down there, Texas Tech, Kansas State, and Kansas all of these former Big 12 teams still stuck in the group of five. Coastal Carolina and Arkansas State finished at the bottom of the SEC. This year, they're going to be challenged by Georgia Southern and Louisiana from the Sun Belt. Arkansas State blows out Louisiana, though, so they avoid relegation 63 to 38. And Coastal Carolina, they also avoid relegation by this crazy diving interception in overtime to seal the victory. The bottom dwellers of the Big Ten this season were Rutgers and Bowling Green State. At the top of the MAC, we got Akron and Toledo, so they're going to be challenging those teams. This year, the MAC teams came to play, though, as they both grab promotion here. First, we have Toledo. They have me saying, holy Toledo, because they have this extremely late touchdown to send the game to overtime, and then they end up winning it 44-41. to Akron, on the other hand, took care of business by getting a late field goal, and they had some good defense to make sure the other team didn't score. On the Atlantic Coast, Boston College and Virginia find themselves at the bottom of the ACC. Houston and North Carolina State, they're looking for promotion up from the American, and both of the underdogs, the 
the American teams, they blow out their opponents to earn promotion to the ACC. On the West Coast, Fresno State blows out Boise State to avoid relegation. So they're sticking around in the Pac-12. But UCLA, they earn promotion after being stuck in the Mountain West for a bit. They blew out Washington State. Iowa State, they're sticking around in the Big 12 as they avoid relegation by defeating UTEP straightforward. UAB, they found themselves in another shootout, this time against Oklahoma State. This game went into triple overtime, but Oklahoma State ends up winning the game 41 to 33. So they get to remain in the Big 12, and that's going to send UAB straight back to Conference USA. Florida Atlantic killed it this year. Not only were they doing well in their conference, but just generally across the country. They were the number one seed. They made it to the national championship. In the first round, they played against Army, another group of five team that made it into the Power Five. However, in the national championship, they do lose to Nebraska, 31 to 27. It was a close game. I was rooting for the crazy storyline, but they threw this late interception to lose it. Tough scenes for them. The SEC seems to be the most resilient in terms of this changing world of college football right now with promotion and relegation. Nine seasons in, we've only had a few teams from the Sun Belt make it up to the SEC. Coastal Carolina at eight and Arkansas State there at the bottom. That means they're going to be playing in that relegation bowl game later. Vandy and the Sun Belt, they seem to hover around third or fourth most years. But Mississippi State, they're just genuinely a bad team, dude. There's been many years where they're at the bottom of the Sun Belt Conference. And that's just kind of embarrassing for a former SEC team. Akron and Miami of Ohio, they're sticking around in the Big Ten. Rutgers and Iowa, they're staying in the MAC. Army, UCF, USF, Cincinnati, and Memphis all managed to stay in the ACC for another year. Boston College, Virginia, Wake Forest, and Virginia Tech, they still can't seem to get out of the American Conference. Fresno State, San Diego State, and BYU, they stay in the Pac-12 for another season. And the lowly Pac-12 teams in the Mountain West, Arizona State, Colorado, and Washington State, they're all going to be remaining down there for another season. Florida Atlantic, once again, top two in the Big 12. Charlotte is sticking around at number five and MTSU is at number eight. And down in Conference USA, you still got TCU, Kansas State, and Kansas. On to the bowl games. We got Arkansas State versus Louisiana. Arkansas State had this clutch overtime kick and they're going to win it and avoid relegation. South Carolina has an overtime game with Southern Miss, but the Gamecocks get the win 28 to 35. Northwestern earned promotion back into the Big Ten in a blowout game over Toledo. Purdue avoids relegation to Ohio 28 to 21 in a straightforward game. Florida State finds themselves near the bottom of the ACC. They're challenged by Duke this year, who finally have an opportunity to get back into the Power Five. But it's tough scenes to go against Florida State because they get routed by the Seminoles big time, 38-17. to The Blue Devils, once again, are going to be playing in the American Conference next season. Navy upsets Houston earned promotion to the ACC for the first time. Two Pac-12 teams, UCLA and UNLV, they're avoiding relegation against Nevada and Oregon State to stay in the Pac-12. Rice and Texas Tech, they had a really close game here. But surprise Surprisingly, Rice wins it, sending Texas Tech right back to Conference USA. Rice avoids relegation, and they're staying in the Big 12. Western Kentucky, on the other hand, they get a straightforward victory against Iowa State to earn promotion into the Big 12. In the national championship, we got Florida and West Virginia facing off in a very competitive game. But the Florida Gators, they managed to win it 34-29. So much of college football has changed by this point in the simulation. Army is third in the Atlantic Coast Conference. UCF is right behind them at four, Navy at six, and Cincinnati down at 11. ACC teams now in the American Conference. We got Virginia Tech, Virginia, and Wake Forest. Charlotte, FAU, MTSU, they've all managed to stay in the Big 12 all this time. UNLV, BYU, Fresno State, and San Diego State, they're solidified into the Pac-12 again. Washington State and Colorado, they're very mid-Mountain West teams at the moment. Arizona State and Oregon State, they're just straight up bad Mountain West teams. TCU, the best chance they have of getting out of Conference USA so far, but it's too little too late. They don't have enough to get to that promotion relegation bowl game. Texas Tech, Iowa State, Kansas, and Kansas State all finish in Conference USA as well. Leaving the Big 12 as the most changed Power 5 conference by far. Iowa finished eighth in the Mid-American Conference. Akron, another strong season in the Big 10. And Miami of Ohio, they're sticking around in the Big 10. Mississippi State and Vanderbilt, now they're just both dreadful in the Sun Belt. The Commodores actually finished dead last in the conference. Former Sun Belt team Coastal Carolina finishes 11th in the SEC. But now it's time for our final promotion relegation bowl games. And you better pay attention because some of these have some crazy storylines. Appalachian State and Marshall, they earned promotion to the SEC. Both of them for the first time, they do it at the buzzer here, relegating Arkansas State and Missouri down to the Sun Belt. Rutgers, they blow up Minnesota to earn promotion back into the Big Ten. So all that work for Minnesota to get back into the Big 
Big Ten. It's all for naught. Here at the end of the simulation, they are back down in the Mid-American Conference. Northwestern goes to overtime with Eastern Michigan, but Northwestern, they get an interception late to win the game, avoiding relegation. Oregon finds themselves in another relegation bowl game here. This one cuts it close. They go into double overtime against Nevada, but the Ducks escape once again, avoiding relegation 33 to 30. Air Force has better luck though, as they blow out Arizona right from the rip to earn themselves a promotion back into the Pac-12. Memphis avoids relegation by just stomping Boston College. Duke with another shot at promotion here in a bowl game. This one against USF. It was a close one, but they managed to get redemption 25 to 20. They are finally back in the ACC, sending USF back to the American. Good for those Blue Devils. Rice blows out UTEP to avoid relegation, and UAB, after being in these bowl games, what feels like basically every season, they earn promotion to the Big 12 by blasting Western Kentucky. And in our final college football playoff simulation, it's a rematch of the 2009 National Championship game. We got Florida versus Oklahoma, and you're not going to believe this. The Sooners, they come up clutch with a late fourth quarter touchdown to be crowned the national champions. Extremely epic game. So this experiment brought a ton of wild results. As you can tell, just scrolling through every conference, that the college football world looks significantly different than it did 10 years ago. We had some movements that I expected, like typical conference bottom dwellers like Vanderbilt and Rutgers being relegated many times over. But we also had some shocking ones, like Florida State being relegated just two years after winning the national championship. Some group of five teams, they're pretty impressive as well. Florida Atlantic, they dominated in the Big 12 for many years. We even had several group of five teams make the college football playoff shortly after they were promoted to the Power Five. These included Florida Atlantic, Northern Illinois, and Army. And we had teams like Akron coming into the Big 12 and just winning the conference outright. NIU did the same thing just a few seasons later. Maybe the Big Ten is just soft. That's the moral of the story. I was also surprised with the amount of Power Five teams that underperformed in the group of five. For example, TCU never managed to make it out of Conference USA after being relegated there in season two. Virginia Tech, the same thing. They never made it out of the American Conference conference after being relegated there. Sometimes that relegation hits you harder than other teams. I thought this system was extremely entertaining and exciting to watch though, because it was hard to predict which team would win each season, which is interesting because we had a lot of games where teams were like 2-10 and 10 going against 11-1 and 1 teams. So just looking at their records, you would just assume one team would be way better than the other. But that's why you play the games. You never know what's going to happen. It was interesting to see how each conference played out individually themselves. Like some conferences were way more resistant to relegations than others. No surprise, the SEC was the most resistant, assuming that they had the all-around best teams as a total. While the Big 12, one of the weaker conferences, had the most turnover of all the conferences. Like by the end, the Big 12 was almost unrecognizable with how many Conference USA teams invaded. Those Big 12 teams were not putting up a fight in Conference USA. I mean, there's a lot of them trapped down there. But I will say, I noticed a lot of the traditional college football powerhouses like Alabama, Georgia, those type of teams, they were never at the bottom of the conference, even a decade later. So they largely stayed the same. There were never any relegations there. I think Florida State might be the biggest one. Oregon got close a few times. Clemson was near the bottom, but they weren't in a regulation bowl game. Basically, all the turnover was those teams you'd expect to be at the bottom, and then those like middle of the range teams that occasionally have a bad season. This like snip snap nature of the power five going to the group of five and back up over and over, that's got to be a wild experience for the fans. And there's some cases where your team could just have like one bad player or one bad performance, and it curses your team for several years. Like if we look at UCLA, that one quarterback that had that five interception game, they were stuck down in the Mountain West for like five years. That's tough luck for them. This system does make every bowl game have meaning and it makes it super emotional and tense. In the real world, they promote and regulate teams over like a long period of time. And it's all based around money, media contracts, that kind of thing. Basically just potential revenue. But the system we have in place in this video, it's not based on that whatsoever. This system, it's all about checks and balances to make sure the power five stays power or at least the best teams that are meant to be there can stay up there. And if you're not good enough, you're booted down. This promotion relegation stuff, it's truly fascinating to me. But no, I don't imagine this system would ever work out in real life in college football. Unfortunately, because we got to think about it, the media contracts just wouldn't work out. Like, it'd be crazy if, like, let's say Alabama had a bad season one year. They get relegated. Like, you're telling me Alabama going down to the Sun Belt? No, there's no way. There would be riots. <laughs> and also, you're kind of damaging the history of schools. Like, you're immediately taking 
taking away like rivalries and stuff by sending them off to a new conference just because they were bad one year. That's why we have the beauty of video games. When we have a lot of customization features like this, we can take over the college football world and just kind of spin it and experiment however we feel like it. But that's pretty much all I got for this video. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. You're all legends in my book. And as for me, I am Drew Morris, big old Drewski, not the expert. And I'll see all you guys in my next video. Peace. Thank you to Patreon supporters Christian Tang, Jack Webb, Matt Woodruff, Anthony Uhas, Alex Mohar, Timbo Slice, Rosalie Jarecki, Demandre Hunter Martin, and Casey Knox. By the way, Frank's still alive. First face came in a while, I know.